Hello, so I thought I should do updates on what I've done so far. Um, I've updated the project window stuff. You'll notice that the windows are now centered on each other. That's a uh, window positioning and all of that in, in, in window listing and keeping track of those and saving their previous positions are now in. So um, I can show you that here. I, sa I saved my content window somewhere around here last time, uh, or that's where it was last time. And I have a new hotkey, control space will bring up the content browser, so there it is. Um, we also have some updates to um, the log window. You'll notice there's an all, so uh, now it'll list out all of them. So if I came in here and did log info, log warn, log error, this just creates some dummy messages in our logging system. Um, you'll see that they come in the order that they were received, uh, but they, the latest is at the top, so you can see that streaming. There may be some issues there where, when if it's just pumping uh, messages over and over and over and over, um, you might have a hard time uh, selecting them with, with, with it scrolled or whatever. We'll, we'll figure that out. But for the most part, you can just select the categories to, to work around that sort of um, issue. And then I think these categories, what I'll do is I'll actually have them um, not in reverse order so you can more easily manage that. Um, so you can also get around in the editor um, by uh, the console window a little bit easier. So you can see type log there to open up the log window. So um, popular again. So that's another way that you can access things in the editor. And the console window just makes it easier for you to do all kinds of things in the future um, inside of the in, inside of the editor. Okay, so another thing that has been added is stages. So um, here inside of this blank stage, stages are maps. I just call them stages because stage is a very easy keyword to search for inside the code and find all the things related to it. If I do map, it'll show up. There's other things called map, level, whenever you have to do it, player levels or whatever, like gameplay stuff. Um, that'll show up. And, uh, you know, the alternatives are like scene or whatever. So um, stage is fine for now. I, I can change it. We can change it in the future if uh, there's popular demand for it. Anyways, so I'm going to open up the content window again. And I'm going to look for a monkey. I'm going to put in a monkey in this stage. And let's just put him back there. And then let's put a cube in here. And let's put a cube over there. So now we have uh, these two objects in here. We can press Control S or we can go to Save Stage. And you'll notice that that alert window um, now all has the ability also to have an input text box. So I'm going to put that in here as just a, a cool guy. We'll save that stage. So now we have um, our saved stage and we can load it up. So what I'll do is I'll actually show you another feature here. Um, is undos and redos are in, so I can press Control-Z. You'll see that it'll go through and do undos. And now we have nothing uh, left, and we can redo things. So undo and redo the memento system is in. Um, so now let's go to, let's, what do we call it, cool guy? We have our cool guy stage, and we can open up that stage. And yes, I know it won't save, but there you go. There's our stage. And we can, I'm going to create another cube in here, cube. Um, we can. Let's uh, just put it over here. Do parenting. So if I select, say, this cube and then this cube, and I press Control P, they're parented. It didn't say so. Um, I'm going to work out, you know, I'm going to put it in the log or maybe a status bar down here so it's very obvious what just happened. Um, so these two are now parented. This, the, it's parented to the last selection. So this guy here is the parent. So if I were to select this guy and then parent him to the monkey, um, now those two are parented. So if I move the monkey, it'll move all of them. If I move um, the cubes, they don't want me to select. Okay, I gotta figure out what that is. Um, then you know the parent-child hierarchies will move. So another thing about hierarchies is we have 
the start of the hierarchy window, which I can get with Control H. And you'll see um, this hierarchy window here. Uh, ignore these little arrows. I'm actually going to remove them um, for now and work on collapsing later. Um, but the hierarchy window is still working progress uh, just for beautification. beautification. I'm going to be putting a search bar at the top so you can search through them. Um, these three guys are unnamed because uh, when I load them up, they don't have names. I think I'm going to assign the names to the name of the object file. The thing is, an object file can have many meshes, and so maybe they should be the name of the mesh. I don't know. I'll figure that part out. But yeah, we have a hierarchy here, and you can select objects in the hierarchy using this. Uh, by by selecting them just here. There we go. Now it's working there. Um, the box selection on children seem to be broken at the moment. Okay. Um, but you'll see also when I select things in here, like I select the monkey, the monkey is going to be, it's the root, so the monkey is selected here. Um, and as I click through on here, uh, oh, there it is. That's why they're, they're, they think they're at the center because they're using um, relative transforms or something. So if I select it, here maybe no okay um anyways i'll figure that out now the monkey's in the center uh but you'll see that it highlights the particular object that we're working with here um so yeah the, this, those are a lot of the updates um still working out um the hierarchy and the parenting i literally just added those just before this video so they're a little incomplete but i need to run off uh, and do some stuff for now and I thought it's been um, long enough since the last update so just updating you on all of that but yeah there's there's been quite a few things added in um, a lot of minor tweaks a lot of bug fixes and uh, yeah so that's that's kind of the progress and kind of what I'm gonna do next obviously is finish up my parenting stuff and selecting those and the hierarchy things. Um, and then I can work on a few more interesting things. I think starting with some messaging, because when you do actions inside of the uh, editor, they're not super obvious. So I think I'll start with the status bar, and then there can be a little message down there for things that have happened. You can just post messages to that um, to make it obvious what has happened if things aren't too visual. Uh, that's probably the primary thing. And also I want to make it so, for example, um, you can't see the log window right now. Maybe in that status bar, I'll add little icons for uh, counters for how many new messages or how many messages are in the log for um, info, warnings, and errors. Just making things a lot more visual, uh, visible as to what you're doing and fixing out those bugs, I think, are the next major things. After that, I'm going to work on templates. I think. I think most people call them blueprints for Unreal or prefabs for Unity, but um, I call them templates because I'm a programmer and I use programming terms like stage uh, so that it doesn't interfere with my other code. So, so of course, things will be renamed later, but uh, we'll have templates where you can compose these entities. Um, and then also a details window where we can rename entities and see their positions visually as you know numbers and stuff that you can type in. Um, and then after that, we'll be doing binding data. So you can create a structure in Go that has your plain old data um, inside of it. You can have uh, you know whatever kind of structures you want that can be presented as little, little boxes on the uh, details window where it can show you all the structures you have bound. Um, and then, of course, the structures will have to implement an interface in Go, and that interface will allow for initialization in case you want to say, uh, I want this monkey to have a structure for, I don't know, um, jumping. And then when this monkey is created, the initialize function is called on that data, and then you can do whatever you want from there. You can add updates so that it updates every frame. You can do anything um, that that data needs to do. Uh, oh, one of the hidden things that I did add is that all um, entities in the editor have IDs now. So each one has a unique global ID, and that allows entities to reference each other based on their ID um, and uh, makes it so that things like this, like separate windows, can, can reference those objects um, 
so it'll be used in the details as well for that sort of stuff so that's that's all the the basic things that's happened over the last few days and uh, what I'm looking forward to working on so please let me know if you have any questions or if you have any ideas um, or if you want to contribute uh, oh I, I guess I can show that real quick okay so one of the other things I was working on is the website kaijuengine.org um, the main thing is all this documentation is automatically generated with MK Docs. Um, so you'll see I have some getting started information um, for in, for people who want to come help the engine development. Here's some information on how to build from source, for example. Um, what are some concepts like the pop-ups and whatever I'm working out those. Uh, how to write UIs, how to preview them live. Um, I could probably show this another time. Uh, essentially, you can live preview your UI as you're coding it in HTML and CSS. Every time you save the HTML file or the CSS file, it'll update the window so you can see what the layout would look like. And you can also bind JSON data to that, so you can actually have your your bindings in there. Um, but the other thing is the API is now exported, so the entirety of the code base um, it's it's GoDoc is generated and then that's a text file and then those text files are turned into markdown files so um, you can easily see all the documentation basically from the, the engine and you can link to it too so um, you can send these links to people if they have questions um, and 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 that sort of stuff so yeah uh, the documentation here is new uh, you can also link to other things uh, inside the documentation. And this is just done inside of the code itself. So if we looked at, say, the host code, um, I'm gonna stop running this. And we looked at, uh, what was that? Okay, it was like creating entity. Oh, there it is. So if you put a little um, pound symbol or hash or whatever, and then the name of it, it will um, know it will do the linking automatically. So this is a relative link here. Um, I think I have a one that's a that's a non-relative link. Yeah, here's one that's a non-relative link. You just put the path to the package and then put a slash and the function. And if this, this since this is a global, um, this is a function not bound to a structure. You do that. Otherwise, it would be like my struct dot whatever. And that just automatically sets up all the linking uh, whenever it's generated through the API docs. Um, so yeah, the documentation is new and where the docs located, if you wanna, if you're updating the engine and you wanna add some documents, go to the docs folder and ignore the API folder. This It's git ignored because it's all generated as part of a git action uh, or GitHub action. Um, but here's where you would put that stuff. So for example, UI, this is the UI stuff. And then once you add your file to add it to the navigation list, um, there's an MK docs, and then there's a nav category here where you can set up your navigation uh, to your new page. So yeah, documentation is super important. Otherwise, no one knows how to use anything. So I thought it was important to get that set up now. Okay. Well, I got to go. Um, if you have any questions, let me know. If you have any uh suggestions let me know as well uh, feel free to join the discord um, i probably won't be making a bunch of small one to two minute videos like i was doing a couple of times um, they just take too much time to set up and record and render and upload and all that um, if you want live updates about what i'm doing basically daily uh, I, I get up at 5 a.m central time and uh, i start coding for a few hours before work so uh, you can follow me on on Twitter. Uh, the, there's a link, and I basically post updates I'm doing and 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 show animated images and all that sort of stuff. See you.